Hello, everyone. Hi, Richa. Hi. Hi, Varsha. Hey. Uh, so, um, as you all know, United States is preparing for the very big day tomorrow. And on our channel, uh, we have a special episode this time with a very special guest, a friend of mine who has accepted uh, my invitation and she's here to share some of her experience uh, with US elections and all that. Um, I just want to give a very brief uh, background of Richa. So uh, Richa, she is my friend. She works uh, with me at the city of Richmond. Uh, she is an architect by profession. Uh, she is Indian born. Uh, she migrated to the United States at a very earlier age uh, when she was a kid. And, um, and she has been living here in the United States all these years. Um, as far as her profession, as I already mentioned, she is, archit she is an architect. And um, as far as extracurricular activities is concerned, she is gradually getting into politics and some other good cause activities. So welcome, Richa. Thank you for accepting my invitation. Very happy to have you. Thank you, Varsha. Okay, so um, as we start our session uh, today, um, it's... Uh, I think it's a great time for us here in the United States, and I would like to love. Lo I would love to find out from you what is your experience. How have you uh, been uh, seeing all these different things happening in the United States as far as elections? How did you vote? How was your voting experience? All that. Okay. Um, well, I kind of um, started to understand. I'm starting to try to understand how politics works here in the U.S. I took, started to take an interest a little bit more about maybe six years ago and uh, realized it's very complicated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and George Washington is the one 250 years ago when he created how how we're going to function here in the U.S., how the politics is going to work. And, um, and I feel like a lot of editing needs to be done. <laughs> From, you know, he was very insightful to see what the future would be like, but a lot has changed. And I think progression, you know, there have been some changes that have happened, like initially, um, no, uh, only business owners were supposed to vote, then white men started to vote, then women started to vote, blacks started to vote, um, people abroad who are US citizens started to vote. So, so things have changed. So there is a way to change things because it has happened. Um, so I, I certainly haven't experienced, um, I was never an adult in India, so I don't know how elections work there. And I don't know if elections work anywhere else in any other country a better way than what we have here mm -hmm. but my experience is only here in the u.s mm -hmm. um these are COVID days um every all the rules are so different now mm -hmm. um so um but um yes i did vote um i'm not sure if i believe i, I know they keep telling you uh voting is very important uh you uh, you know it, i'm not sure if um if you vote blindly then then that messes things up you have to educate yourself or have a really trusted person who knows enough about politics and you can trust them and vote just like them and you know then you can go and vote but i think it's such a tricky thing i mean how do you for example for a president how do you get to know the president how do you get to know this stranger <laughs> that pops on tv and depending on how much financing he gets we get to find out a little bit about him in the last few months you know before that it just seems they're strangers to accept, except the president who's already occupied, who is the president. We know a little bit about them. Um, but their powers are a little limited because then there's this Congress that 
uh, that's been created. And here in America, and I don't know what it is in India or anywhere else, there's a big party system. There's the Democrats and then there's the Republicans. And the Congress is either um, Republican or Democrats. They're about like senators. They're about 100, 100 senators. Um, there are 50 states, two senators from each state. So this time, because of COVID, um, they have something called absentee ballots. Um, and absentee ballots are only offered to people either they're out of country or they're ill and they can't make it in person. November 3rd is the voting day. Tuesday, whichever Tuesday, sometimes it falls on 4th, um, is um, the date when everyone is supposed to vote. Um, but due to certain circumstances, they will let you do absentee voting. Um, I think you can go in person early vote with that. Um, but now, of course, rules have ch changed. Uh, because of COVID, you don't need a reason to um, get an absentee ballot. Uh, and ballot is just that formal uh, piece of paper that you get that you fill out. You mm -hmm. Only one person um, gets one ballot. Okay. Um, is this um, ballot the same? Uh, the ballot that you get in your mail, is it the same that you get when you are in person? So it was interesting. So I got a ballot by mail and they had many options. They said you can, the absentee ballot, ballot you know, there are always deadlines with everything. So absentee ballot was mailed to me. And initially, because I'm, I'm one of the high risk candidates, I was going to mail it in. Uh, but there was so much tampering with the mail that then they created drop boxes. Um, and so then I thought, oh, in the ballot, um, they had the presidential candidate uh, listed and, um, oh, well, the two candidates, the Republican candidate and that person's VP and the Democrats um, candidate and its VP. And we just have to, we're given pencils and we just circle it. Uh, we have to be very careful to circle it. And then in our, in our case, uh, there was House of Representative um, uh, also listed, um, which is another branch. It's another piece of the Congress. In the Congress, there's a Senate and a House of Representatives. Um, so um, so you, you, choose, you choose that. There's a Republican and there's a Democrat candidate. And you circle that. Sometimes they have a couple of uh, laws that they're trying to pass, so they'll have that listed. It's just one long piece of paper. You circle it. It takes a few seconds if you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't sign it. You don't, name, you don't put a name to it or anything, and then you just put it in a machine uh, that tabulates your results, right, you know, that goes into the computer system or whatever. Um, oh. And then you just get a little sticker. You just get a little sticker saying, I have voted. Okay. Um, and that's it. That's done. Okay. So uh, so the, the the paper that you had put in your uh, selection, so that is kind of scanned into something? Is it what it is? Um, so you're scanning it into a s computer yeah, and that... exactly. You're scanning it into... It just gets deposited into a bin. It scans it and dumps it into a bin that we can't we don't have access to it okay okay so okay. i don't know where it goes but oh, okay you know. okay okay i and, i was under the impression maybe it's a, a paper that is in a bin and then people take it out and uh, read it so i think no, those are the i mean old days. so when we when our turn comes we meet um one of the uh, very carefully chosen volunteers uh, they check our driver's license they check our authenticity um, they cross off our names, they check in their computer system, they have a list of all the uh, of voters and, you know, we, we can only go to our own district to vote. We can't go right. anywhere in the U.S. to vote. Mm -hmm. if, if we were somewhere else in the U.S., then we would have to use that absentee ballot, mail it in type thing. Um, but since with COVID days, we are still 
you know, using our absentee ballot, which I had, which they discarded, um, but I'm still only allowed to go to one place that's mm -hmm. designated for me, for mm -hmm. me to do an in-person mm -hmm. uh, voting. Uh, these uh, carefully chosen volunteers had looked it up and told them, actually, you have to go to this place in order to mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. in-person voting. Mm -hmm. So that person needed to go. So you have to uh you know make sure you're going to the right place i mean it, it becomes very natural it becomes like a rhythm um but if you move around a lot you have to do a little bit of homework information starts coming to you in the mail but with these days of technology there are all kinds of websites you can look up and see right right, right. So, right. so when you, can't, you are like, i don't know how it is in india but you can't go anywhere and vote right, there's right, a designated right. mm -hmm. location for you yeah isn't that part of the registration process? Like when you're registering to vote, that's where you indicate your, uh, like your county of residence and that's how you are allotted a place. Well, there is, um, there is this uh, survey that they do. Um, you know, there's the taxes, there's all these mechanisms that they have that, that let these people know who, who are, how many voters do they have and what are their names and what are their addresses? So they, you know, there's the driver's license to, for them to verify that the right person is coming uh, to vote. I think anyone, I think 18 is the age these days, you know, that those, those changes keep occurring. I think anyone over age 18 is able to vote um, these mm -hmm. days. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, like um, I was um, like reading somewhere, you have to register first, right? That's the very first step that you do, isn't it? You have to um, register to vote. I'm to remember, I don't remember registering. I just, it just sort of happened. I don't know. Okay. I know when you take a driver's license, you sometimes have to choose if you're a Democrat or Republican, you can leave that blank. Um, but there's this survey, I'm forgetting the survey's name. Um, I don't recall registering. I don't know how that works. I'm forgetting. Uh, okay. um, maybe I'm trying to remember, I used to live in Maryland, which is another state, and then I moved to Virginia. And I don't even know how that all got transferred. I mean, I, I don't know that answer. I mean, I'm sure, mm -hmm. I don't know how one, how the gods find out that, <laughs> that, that, you know, you are one of the candidates to, I mean, I don't know. Okay. I think as long as you're alive, I think there's just a pool, um, you know, if, if there's a death certificate, if you died, then your name gets crossed out, but I don't know. I don't know that one. Because, you know, what if people haven't registered, then how do they go and vote? Right, right. So I think maybe you're right. Maybe there is a formality one needs to go through. And maybe that's how they get the names then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There probably is. I just don't remember doing that. So. Okay. Okay. And uh, when you went to vote, um, so there were, I guess, uh, social distancing rules in place. So you were asked to speak. Yeah. So, um, you know, this weekend in Virginia, every, every state has, November 3rd is the day, the last day, that is the election day. But every state with this um, absentee voting and all of that, um, they have cutoff dates or when you can start, when you can end. They have different dates. In Virginia, Saturday was the last day to do in-person absentee voting uh -huh. or early voting or whatever you want to call it. So the lines were huge. But when I went, um, you know, they had these little circles drawn at a six foot distance. So um, every time the line moved, we moved to the next circle. So uh -huh. that way, for, mask was required. If you didn't wear a mask, you weren't allowed in. Mm -hmm. or any, even in the line, mm -hmm. which, is, which is great. And I don't know for how long those circles carried, like I was just fifth person. So uh, definitely for, you know, 20 or so people, there were circles. Mm -hmm. But for, um, 
you know, for the people who are going to be voting tomorrow or who voted on Saturday, um, there were hundreds and hundreds of people. So I don't know how they maintained the distance, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do feel that they are being careful. As yeah, good to know that. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess uh, tomorrow we'll find out, right? I mean, how people are, I mean, finishing well, up all this. Everything is so crazy this time. Um, it's likely we will not know tomorrow. Um, I think uh, we'll certainly get a lot of information, but you know, uh, because some some are getting postmarked, but they might not reach there, or they might not get counted, or or some that might have, when it comes through a mail, there's a signature verification. So there are, there are pieces that uh, could affect um, where uh, we will, we might not know the results tomorrow. Okay. Um, and every state has their own little rules about when is the last postmark date and that type of thing. So, um, and both parties are trying to fight as to when the cutoff time is. Mm. Um, so I think uh, most of the media is telling us uh, that tomorrow we will not know our results by midnight tomorrow. Even the last election actually it took after midnight because I remember sleeping off. Right, and right. It was know, early yeah. in the morning next day is when really we found out. And that's when Things were normal, right? Things were a little bit normal, him having the office. Right. Um, so that's why most likely, it, you know, the president will get elected the second time is typically what ha ends up happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so every president typically has a two term, which is the most they can get. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah, I guess uh, that's, that's very good information to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you educated me a lot. And I think um, everybody who is listening would be greatly uh, informed by this session. So I really appreciate your time, Richa. And no I problem. hope whatever the result is, it is in favor of someone, not, not favor of everyone. And it definitely hope, I hope it's in favor of the country, of course, and good things right. happen for the country. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah so i guess that should be it for our session today uh thank you again thank you thank you all righty okay take care bye